Hi, I'm Michael, and this is the Lenovo 300E Chromebook. I largely dismissed Chromebooks when they first came out. I figured they were too limited, and they were little more than a glorified web browser with a keyboard. And you had to be online all the time, right? Well, Chromebooks and the Chrome OS platform have come a very long way in these last few years. So when it came time to replace my aging Ultrabook, I had to give Chromebooks a serious look. So sort of accidentally on purpose, I landed on the Lenovo 300E Chromebook, which is actually targeted squarely at the education market. It's called the Lenovo 300E, E for education, presumably. And it's important to distinguish that this is also available with Windows 10, but I opted for the Chromebook version. So even though this Chromebook is being targeted squarely at the education market for like elementary and high school kids, to do their homework on, I want to know whether this was useful for bloggers, travel writers, and entrepreneurs on a budget. There is no way that this could ever be my main computer. The screen is too small, performance is kind of slow, the apps are lacking, the local storage is insufficient. I'd never want to edit a vlog on here, but I could write a blog post. Or realistically, through Google Docs, I could even write my next book on here. And for me personally, as a blogger, it is way easier to write a blog post on something like the Lenovo 300E Chromebook than it is to write it on my smartphone, which coincidentally enough is a Google Pixel 3 XL. Typing on the little on-screen keyboard just isn't as good as having like a real keyboard to write on. But why did I pick this specific Lenovo Chromebook in particular? Well, first, I didn't want to spend more than $500. Devices like the Google Pixel Book are supposed to be very good, but if I'm gonna be spending that much money, upwards of $1,000 or even more, I'd much rather get an actual Windows machine instead. Second, I didn't want it to be any bigger than 13 inches or so. The portability of it is a really important factor for me because the whole point is that I wanted to have something small and light and easy to carry around. Third, it needed to have Android app support. The Chrome Web Store just isn't sufficient and a lot of Chromebooks now support Android apps from the Google Play Store, and that's something that was really important to me. And fourth, I wanted to have four gigabytes of RAM. I understand that Chrome OS is really lightweight and it's supposed to be really efficient, but getting a machine with just two gigabytes probably would have been pretty painful. So what about actually using it? I've had this Lenovo Chromebook for about two months now, including taking it on our trip through Portland and the Oregon coast. So here are some of my takeaways from my experience these last couple of months. So first is the fantastic battery life. I'm able to get easily 10 hours or even more on a single charge. My friend Stacy Robin Smith, who you might know as a dad in the burbs, his day job is that of a high school teacher and his school uses Chromebooks extensively. What he told me is that you never actually have to shut down a Chromebook because the standby uses almost no power at all. So you just kind of close the lid or open the lid when you want to use it. Second, the keyboard is surprisingly good. Not ThinkPad good, but still Lenovo good. I'm used to using full-size mechanical keyboards, like those from Steel Series or Tessero, and I was concerned that the keyboard on an 11-inch laptop was gonna be too small, too cramped, too uncomfortable. But as it turns out, it's really not. There's surprisingly good key travel, there's good spacing, the actual keys themselves are a decent size, and I'm able to type on this very comfortably, which really surprised me, especially given its smaller size. Third is the unique pencil-enabled touchscreen. When I was shopping for a Chromebook, I didn't need one necessarily with a touchscreen, but I thought that that was gonna be nice for using with the Android apps, and having the 360 hinge which folds all the way around was just you know icing on the cake. But what's something that's really unique about the Lenovo 300e Chromebook is that the touchscreen is pencil-enabled. So basically what that means is you can use a regular pencil as if it was a stylus on the screen. So you don't get the pressure sensitivity of something fancy like a Wacom or anything like that, but it does mean that you can have a relative level of precision using just a regular pencil. And no, it doesn't actually leave a mark on the screen. So I don't do a lot of drawing or anything on here, but that's one of these nice little bonus features. Fourth is the port selection. You'll find that with a lot of newer laptops now, they're cutting out all the ports and the card slots, so you're left with just the one USB-C. That's not at all the case here. So in addition to the USB-C, which is used both for power and for peripherals and data, you also get an HDMI port for video out, a regular USB-A, I think 3.0 or 3.1 port, 
as well as a full size SD card slot and a three and a half millimeter uh, headset jack. So between all of that, uh, you pretty much have everything covered. The regular USB port will cover the majority of peripherals that you already have. And having the full size SD card slot instead of just a micro SD card slot is really helpful when I'm you know, taking pictures off of my main camera like this, I can get onto the Chromebook way easier than having to deal with the dongle life. Remember the dongle life? We don't like the dongle life. And fifth, perhaps most importantly, it's cheap and it's portable. I was able to get this for about $330 Canadian, so that works out to about $250 US, which is really inexpensive for a Chromebook with the touchscreen, the 360 hinge, decent processor, four gigs of RAM, and with 64 gigabytes of onboard storage. It does everything that I need it to do, and it does it on a budget. So naturally, it's not gonna all be unicorns and rainbows with any device and with this Chromebook. There are some shortcomings that you need to be aware of. The touchscreen is fine, but it is relatively lower resolution. Using USB-C to charge is great, but it's only on one side and not on both sides, and you do need to have the higher wattage charger to be able to charge this. And third, the keyboard, as nice as it is, and even though it's splash proof and all that, it is not backlit. So it's not the best to use in the dark environments. But all that being said, the Lenovo 300E Chromebook, this is more than just an education laptop or an education Chromebook. It's got some education minded things like the rugged design, the cheap price and the splash proof keyboard, but really anyone can use it. This Chromebook, the Lenovo 300E Chromebook, offers great bang for your buck and it really is an underrated star. It does so much for so little money and you get a lot of the features that you'd want for basic travel blogging or anytime that you're on the go. It would make a great study buddy or blogging buddy, I guess. So anyway, thank you so much for watching. That's my kind of re review of the Lenovo 300E Chromebook. Uh, do let me know if you have any specific questions, just put them in the comment section below and I'll try to get to them as best I can. I'll also leave uh, product links in the video description if you wanna check out this as well as other uh, Chromebooks that are available. Again, thank you so much for watching. Uh, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.